Hello everyone, it's Lady Taka, also known as Cress, and it is time for this week's Thrift Finds and Rummage Sale Finds video for uh, July 30th through August 3rd. And I actually did pretty well this week, so I'll try to go in order. Um, the first stop I did was Goodwill this week, and this was the fabulous find. This is called, well, he's a fisherman, obviously, because he's got his little fish in a pole here. And that does come out. And this is how you usually find them. If you're lucky and they're not chipped on top of it, you'll find them without their pole. But I found him with his pole and with this fish still attached to his pole. And he was only $2. No, blue was not the color of the week. I did not buy anything this week that was the color of the week. I paid up all week because I knew he would never be there by next week. Um, because he still has his uh, Shawin Artistic Ceramic Factory sticker on him. He's got all the proper markings on the bottom to be a real import, and he is amazingly not chipped. There's a little defect down here that's a manufacturer's defect. It's just the glazing didn't lay right. That, that often happens right at the bottom. But his pot's intact, his hat's intact, and I really love him. He might have to sit in my shelf for a few months before I sell him. Because a lot of things I, I might wait till September to list. Because on Etsy you get four months of listings for your 20 cents. So like it to hit more into the Christmas season uh, for people buying. But uh, he, they normally sell between like 20 and 25 um, he did not come with his original box. Um, there is some crazy person listing one for 55 plus shipping on there. I, once I get around to listing him in my trash Trashketeer treasures, uh, will probably list him for, uh, 40 and that's so the shipping's in there already because I do that 35 and over order gets free shipping automatically. So just to cover, cause he's going to need a lot of bubble wrap. But I'm really glad his rod is with him and that it still can come out of his hand for packaging because that would be really hard to wrap as the woman in the store tried to do. And then the other thing I bought from Goodwill on Tuesday night for 99 cents is a Dalek. Now, mind you, I have a Dalek like this, not the same company. I have the Funko Pop version of this gold Dalek who is Supreme Leader. Oh, I can't remember which one. But I am loving this one even more. I got the other one from a rum shelf for about the same price. Because this has little runners on it so he can run across thing. He also has movable parts. So I may, in fact, I did, like, my Etsy store is Trash Gator Treasures. And I did recently register as just a user on uh, eBay. And I got Trash Gator Treasures as my new screen name. So I might have to sell some of my newer figures there. Uh, <laughs> cause I don't think I need two gold Daleks, but I definitely am liking this one more with all the movement and all the pieces move. I believe this is an underground toys one, but I'm loving him. He's definitely a keeper. And then this was at Goodwill, but I went back for it the next day because I spotted plates like this with this cool atomic pattern. They're by, uh, Laurel China in the frolic pattern. Don't really think of frolic as atomic, but um, and there were eight of these, and I was like, oh, it's too bad the cups aren't with them because there's an indent. They're snack plates from the 50s. And then when I was dreaming, I decided, well, I'll leave them. If they were like the color of the week, I would have grabbed them. And then I was dreaming, and I realized I saw these about four weeks ago at Goodwill and went and had a very similar line to Rita and Dad going, Oh, look, there's some pretty atomic teacups. Too bad their saucers aren't with them. And I had at the time looked for their saucers like crazy. And these were nowhere to be seen. So I went back the next day and the eight plates are still there and there were five cups. So I go to this Goodwill every Tuesday. I will continue looking for the other three cups. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'll probably wait a little bit again to hit into the Christmas season a little more like even two weeks would do it. Um, I will list a set of four of these 
in my Etsy for 50 to 60, just so I have an extra money to cover shipping. Um, and then I will keep the rest because I'm not, even if I don't find the other three cups, um, one will probably be sufficient for when I'm using the plates. And I will most likely not even use it for a drink. I'll use it for like dipping sauce, uh, for chips or dip pretzels, that kind of thing. Um, but I really do love atomic patterns. So, um, that was my score of the week. I even posted it to the group I'm on for like help identifying things and got like 300 good reactions. Now, before I made it to Goodwill the second day, we did do some shopping at St. Vinny's and I picked up uh, a creamer and sugar set and the sugar does have its lid and I paid uh, $2.50 for the set and it, it's Thompson's Pottery. Um, it's newer, it's probably 90s because um, it says microwave and dishwasher safe. But I thought they'd be really good uh, Christmas sellers, um, since this will be the first Christmas time I've had vintage items in my store. I thought I'd grab up a few Christmas while going was good. And again, I usually buy what I like, so if they don't sell, they'll look, they're not an offensive pattern to me, so they'll look great on my buffet if need be. Uh, I'll put those on the floor, I will grab the art print, which... The frame is loose because one of the screws is missing, but the glass is a kind of damaged on it. It's not broken, but I've tried to clean it like eight times already and it's not fully off. But for a buck fifty, it's worth it for the art print alone. I mean, this was a really good professional frame and it just came loose totally. Um, but I can't seem to get the glass fixed, so I'll probably just put the print in a new frame, the print and the matting. Um, especially since it keeps sliding so you can't even read it. Uh, it's by Wabanei Girl in 2001, and it's called She Who Learns the Truth. And But I love it because it's like, it's got a moon in it, one. It's a good native print. I know we're getting triple reflections. But that's a keeper and I'm going up in the office wall. Now, depending on what frame I put it in, I'll, I can either take it to my St. Ignace office or leave it here in Marquette. Well, we'll see. It'll be appropriate either. We have a good native uh, bit of clients there, so they'll like it too. Okay, what else did I get at St. Vinny's? I got toys and this thing. So this I paid up a little for, but I figured I paid it in weight alone. It's marked $2 craft, and it was not in the craft section. Um, and what it is, is a, it's a little old school TV, and what I figured it out as, it's not marked or anything, but when I looked up TVs like this, thank you eBay uh, Photo for figuring this out, this had a clock in it, so it was a little mini clock. Um, I don't know if I can find a replacement clock, but if nothing else, it will go into a craft. But uh, it is freaking heavy to ship. Um... <laughs> That would definitely not be cheap to ship. You definitely want to put it in a flat rate container because it is heavy. Um, but I loved the design and I figured if nothing else, I could figure out a screen to go on here and it would look cute. Um, so again, I'll probably craft with that for right now. And then I got some crazy looking toys. It was a weird toy day at St. Vinny's on Wednesday. So... First, I found this in the toys, but it's definitely an ornament. And I think I got this same bear vampire thingy in a plush about two months ago. But for 35 cents, even if he's not old. I, I haven't been able to find him yet for whether he's vintage or not. I may sell him on Etsy for like five bucks. Someone's sure you can have them because I have plenty of ornaments. I do sell hand beaded ornaments in my store as well. Um, but it's a vampire and I love vampires. So, and then it was just weird toy day. So, um, I'm sure this guy's from a cartoon, uh, like a Mucha Lucha kind of thing. Cause he's kind of got that wrestling mask on. 
Um, but he actually has a fly bugging him, and when you roll him along, he tries to get at the fly. So, nice and weird. I had to pick it up. Uh, another weird toy is this uh, doggy with these messed up eyeballs. And this is like a parody of Little Pet Shop. It's like a horror Little Pet Shop one. And it's like Bad Pets Shop or something like that. It's by... Uh, Moose is the name of the company. But for 35 cents, I was like, it was worth it just to research it later. And then these two guys, I'm still clueless on, but they were so weird, I had to get them. So they're just farm animals. They're like a, a horse and a, a cow. And the cow's got a little mouse on top of him. And they're, they're obviously related in design. They're both eating hay or something that looks gross, but they look like they've survived the apocalypse. I have no idea. I'd paid up a little more. These were 50 cents each. They were so weird. I had to get them. Again, I have no idea even what year they're from, so I have no idea if I can sell them or not. And, okay, that looks like salvation, rummage sales, rummage sales, rummage sales. I'm trying to... All right, then, I'm trying to remember what day we hit salvation. I don't know. And then I have a bunch of little pins. I think I got most of those rummage selling. So I think the next store we hit was Salvation. I think we hit that Thursday. One moment, I have to get a drink of water. Or rather watermelon lemonade stuff. <clears throat> so I actually did well at Salvation. Salvation's a hit or miss for me. Um, I did get that ice bucket there about two months ago. That sold. Um, but other than that, I really don't find much usually. So it's really hit or miss. And today I really hit. So this is for me because I love s'mores all year long, even in winter. So I thought I'd try this little s'mores maker for a buck. Of course, it's on. They, Salvation here actually is two colors of the week. And of course, like none of my stuff were the color of the week. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. And then I found this little crackle uh, creamer in amber. And you can tell it's really hand blown because of the pontiel mark is nice and deep. It, it looks hand blown. I, I think I paid up a little for it. I paid two because, of course, it couldn't have been the color of the week. But I felt like this is the first piece of really good crackle glass I have found. And I made sure to look for chips. Uh, the fun part with crackle glass is you can never really tell if there's a true crack within the design of the crackle. So I will probably, before I list it for resale, make sure it holds water and doesn't leak. Just because you never know when one of those could be real crack. But it's very cute. I can probably get like 8 to 12 or something like that on it. I mean, I'll make my $2 back on it. There's a couple up right now. Probably list that one right away. Um, again, it felt like a passage of time. And then for a buck, in the box, I got this cute little uh, Leonard silver plated set. Now, first thing I checked was, does it have the spoon? Yes, it has a spoon. And at first this scared me. But it's in plastic, so I'm like, okay, it didn't tarnish because it's in its plastic. I mean, it's open-ended. Then I was like, let's make sure it's actually it. So I look, and it says Leonard Silver Plate. Okay, good. Level one. Then I'm like, has its crystal bowl. Check. Crystal bowl. Not cracked. And then finally, the thing it all sits in. They still have the freaking tag on it. Um, this was open in the box, so you can see how it has tarnished. So I do plan on selling this, so I will polish this. First, I'll try with just a polishing cloth, and then if that doesn't get it clean, I'll dig out the actual silver polish. Because I'm selling it, I feel like if this was as tarnished as this, I would leave it. But since one is tarnished and one is not, I'm, I'll probably take a before picture to put up with it to show that I polished it. But this is a nice, simple design set. So it won't clash with any other uh, pieces anyone would have. 
And I know it's kind of one of those things we'd all use like once or twice a year for a party because it doesn't have a lid, but it wasn't designed with a lid. It was designed to be out on a buffet. And originally it sold at Spiegel's for $10 apparently. And now it's probably still worth 10 to 15. Uh, so we'll see. I did well in that ice bucket, which was glass and, and, and stainless steel had a similar look. So I'm hoping I spent a dollar wisely there. And again, if nothing else, it'll end up on my buffet. So then I found this cute deer fawn or doe. Um, and I've been triple checking for cracks. I paid 50 whole cents for her. And I didn't find an exact match, but I found one with a similar base of green and flowers like that on eBay uh, listed now, nothing on sold comparisons, but I think they had that listed for 10 plus shipping. So I think this will sell and I'll probably put this one up right away. And then uh, the big finds were these. These were in the case. I originally looked in the case because they had a marked doll. And you couldn't really tell because he was right next to the mirror what the hell was going on with him. So we had them pull that out. And then I noticed these in their boxes. Chimney here has a certificate. So there is one small little bit of paint, like teeny tiny chip on the back of his hat. That is how he came. Uh, he was wrapped in plastic. His foam had been replaced in his box, but with even better foam than was in there before. Um... And so these are part of the Disney uh, Classics Collection Collector Society. So they're made in Thailand. This is the 1993 membership figure. He did not have his pin in the box. Uh, the Cricket's name, Cricket's the name Jiminy Cricket is the name of this one. And you can see on the bottom it's signed. I assume someone signed in the name of Walt Disney. Roy Disney signed the certificate that came with that one. And similarly, this one was from the 1994 collection, did not have his pin or his certificate. And it, his is Twas Brillig, so he's dancing in celebration on his tree branch. Um, and I've decided, since he didn't come with his certificate, I'm going to first sell Jiminy. And Jiminy is going for 40 plus shipping at about that um whether they have the pin the, or not i have the box i think i will list him for 40 in my shop and you'll get free shipping so that'll be your deal if you buy my jiminy against everyone else's um but i paid three dollars for him and three dollars for cheshire cat what i've decided is cheshire cat is going to live with me a little bit um i'm not selling him right away i might keep him so i will and and pretty much Jimmy Cricket and Chester the Cricket from the Times Square series books are about the only crickets I like in my life. Um, but I think I can give up the cricket more than I can give up uh, the cat. And uh, the, the other funny thing about finding these two together was I felt like we had the uh, psych spectrum of Disney with from Mad, like the only character madder than Cheshire Cat is the Mad Hatter. And then we have Jimmy Cricket, the conscience. It is kind of funny. But I did get them with boxes for $3 a piece. So that was how I negotiated with myself. If you sell Jiminy, you can keep the Cheshire Cat. And then maybe if I'm really lucky, I'll find another one. And then they can sell that, and I'll have the certificate with it. I'll save the jewelry to the end for people who don't like jewelry. The rest of this is rummage sale funds. So this is a modern thing, but for 50 cents, I was laughing too hard. I had to get it. They were nice enough to include an extra drip tray to put them in for when you use him. This is actually an egg separator. He's available on Amazon right now for like 10 bucks. Uh, but he's not as detailed as the one on Amazon. He, the other one drew in the features more like you just have a little bit of rosiness to the cheeks and the nose here. But this is supposed to be someone who's sick. And so when you drain the eggs, he looks like he has snot running down. So when you separate them. But it was hilarious. I had to get it. If nothing else, it'll make a great joke gift. Who knows? I may even try it on eggs. I don't have an egg separator for those times. So let's see. The soonest he would probably get used is February. 
Because I think the only time I really use egg separators is when I'm making my king cake. But, all right, then I found this mug, which features two cans on it. And I, I tend to sell more mugs than anything on Vintage because one of my products is coasters that I craft. This is actually related to the uh, hen or chicken I found last week because um, it's made in Tunnel, Mexico as well. This one, you can actually read the freaking signature, though. It was done by Perez. How many Perez's there must be in that factory? I don't know. But at least he or she was very proud of their work to make it clearer and not just do their initials and that. So... I will probably, most of my mugs get listed for like 10 to 12. This might get listed for 10, but be $12 shipping instead of $10 shipping because it is a little bit heavier pottery. It is hand pan pottery, and I hear toucans and parrots do well. Um, I then got this little case, and, and it's from 1989. Unfortunately, it, it's not complete there there isn't even the label to identify what it is but for a quarter i picked it up i'm not usually a gun person but when i figured out what gun this was i i, I pretty much had to get it i will probably attempt to sell it as a little thing for a stocking stuffer but it is a little model tommy gun take you back to the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which is what I celebrate for St. Valentine's Day because I'm rarely in a relationship. So, But the gun is here. It still has a case. It just doesn't have all the pretty labels on it. So they're, they're going like, I saw someone selling two of these. One of them one with Tommy Gun and one another one, and they sold it for like forty to eighty dollars, depending on which one. So I mean, it's and then there's some sealed in their original packaging as well. So I'll probably put this on the low end, you know, closer to the holidays, and see if someone just wants it for a stocking stuffer for their someone who either loves gangster stuff or just guns in general. But it is not a real gun; it's just a little tiny model. Uh, so that's why I sell it. You don't sell real guns, though. Um, my rescues from the toy boxes are uh, Goofy. He was totally free. His nose is a little rubbed down, but it was Viking Goofy. I thought that was great. I will put him next to the Viking ship I have in Dad's Christmas Village in the water section. Uh, so, keeping. And then I had to rescue Chewy. He was a whole dime. And I... I don't know what year this one came out. I think this is a more modern one by the saying Disney on it. Must be. Must be from one. Might be Han Solo movie. Chewy. And I couldn't tell. I think his crossbow is fully intact even. So for a dime, Chewy can sit somewhere on my shelf. And then for more sellable items. The first two are definitely waiting till Christmas to near Christmas to get put up, but they're both uh, left in China. So these two are a set of little trinket dishes. Uh, I paid 75 cents for the set. Uh, they're just holly. I haven't looked up what they call it, but they still have their original stickers on them and their markings and their cute little heart shapes. Heart shapes tend to sell. So I hear from others and then I got, they were nice enough to put a little rub on it. Don't know if I'm ever getting that back on. We got another, a trinket box. This Oso left in, I paid 75 cents for this. But the lid and shape are a Christmas tree. So I thought that would be something to sell to Christmas that would fit in a stocking. I probably put five to 10 on them, you know, and if people order multiple items from my shop, they get free shipping, so. I mean, I'd have shipping on it, but if you bought a few things, oh look, I got back on. And then my final figurine rescues were these little striped Japanese kitties. And 
I did notice a little defect on this one. His eye actually pops out a little, but that is a manufacturer's defect. That's from when they were touching the glass into the porcelain to add the color. So it's a manufacturer's mistake. But I couldn't take this one without taking its mate. Um, they are not salt and pepper shakers. They're just figurines. And um, I didn't find any solds for this exact set, but someone has them listed for 37 plus shipping on eBay right now. I think... I might just list them for 35 with free ship because of the little defect. Um, but way more than the dollar I paid for both of them. So, and I hear kitties do well. We'll see it. Because, like, originally I would probably have put 25 plus shipping on there, but since now I have that free shipping and people seem to be taking advantage of it, I have to build in shipping somewhere and it's going to be on the vintage items and not my craft items. <laughs> the only craft item I built in shipping for are going to be my uh, Weeping Angel tree toppers. Now the rest of what I found is like jewelry like things. And the first one I will try to sell in my vintage section near Christmas. There are a few listed right now. It's just like a $10 piece. But it's a little uh angel pin and it's uh by jj and so you can wear it like that and again if it doesn't sell i can go in my pen collection <laughs> and then these that i think the pin i paid 50 cents for and these earrings i paid a quarter for and i'm gonna get four uses out of them because they're these little love earrings with a little bird on them. I'm going to take the love part of the earrings and put them on ornaments that I made. And then I think these little birds, I have another project where I filled little bottles with beads in a rainbow. And I'm just going to attach those as little charms to them to liven them up a little. So good quarter spent for crafting. I know I did good this week because we're nearing the 30 minute mark on the video. Then this are pins. Well, one is the pin. It was a quarter for this bag. Well, look at that. Injured thumb getting in the way. I poked myself a wire last night. Um, I bought this bag simply for this Easter pin. The bunny, and he's not gonna focus. He's cute and adorable, though. And then in it came this bee charm, which I'll probably put on an ornament. And then this I'll probably just put back in a giveaway pile or throw it into someone's order. This I bought because of the snowman, but it came with a pretty uh, butterfly pin as well, like a hat pin. Just a little stainless steel one. But turns out PMI stands for precious moments. But I had a couple uh, Christmas pins and I was trying to figure out to do a lot and I didn't have a snowman, so I grabbed this. But this might up the value of the lot because he's actually quite collectible because uh, his precious moments didn't know <laughs> that. You learn something when you're looking up things. Um, these I paid 75 cents for and I don't know what I'm using for them yet, but I could not resist them. I think most of the, the this stuff is paparazzi because she's a paparazzi dealer, so better than paying five. But they're little snakes and I just loved them. And then the last bag I got is just a mishmash of pins in that. And I actually got two of the same pin. Which is why I bought it. I saw this pin and was like, oh cool, I I'd like one of those. It's a little Branson, Missouri banjo and guitar pin. And look, there's a second one. So I can keep one and sell one if they end up being old enough. Then this ended up being really funny, okay? You have a random cupcake graduation thing, which I'm sure I can craft with. You have a little die that someone's turned into like a recipe card holder. There's a star spangled banner pin. One random cufflink. A pin for a local festival. Another pin for a local thing, ski rule. This random pin, which I'll probably just make a magnet out of. And then this very random watch, which 
looks like it was designed to have gel in it because it looks waterlogged, but I might be able to use that in a craft project, even with the wire because it's a clock, and especially with steampunk theme. Clocks are interesting, but I'm trying to figure out what the hell this was supposed to be doing because the rest of it doesn't actually look waterlogged at all when you take it apart. It doesn't look like it was done tomorrow, so I think it was a design feature. And I don't know why anyone would want their watch to look like it was full of water. So that is everything. So I did buy quite a bit to sell, and it'll be hard to sell some of them. So those are the ones that will go fast, you know, the ones you really love and don't want to get rid of. Those will go fast. Um, so thanks for watching.